Yeah. All right. Hello, Zoom folks. Hopefully you can hear us okay. Um, we'll be starting shortly. We have Rebecca Cummings, our Digital Matters Librarian today, leading us through this workshop. Um, so feel free to put questions in the chat or when Rebecca opens up to questions, you can unmute yourself and chime in just so we can like integrate between in-person space and remote. Um, we also have, uh, you know, our fancy 360 webcam set up here. So as Rebecca's screen sharing, you can kind of see the room and her screen at the same time. If you go to your view at the top of your Zoom window and hit um, the side-by-side -side view and pin the speaker, you can kind of be in both places at once. And uh, we will be recording this Zoom today if everyone is comfortable with that. If not, you know, go ahead and put something in the chat. Um, but we'll get this recording posted up to folks so that they can, um, you know, get get the workshop after we're done here. So you can feel free to share that with your um, colleagues. Uh, anything else before we start? So you want to tell them how to pin the, the box? Yeah, so on the speaker box, you right click and you can click pin. Um, we'll also be passing around a sign up sheet to receive digital matters email. So for Zoom folks, if you don't receive emails from us, you can put your email in the chat right now, and then you can stay up to date on future events and that sort of thing. But yeah, thank you for coming. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Comstock. It's great to see everybody, both in person and over Zoom. I'm gonna try to like look at my screen sometimes and look around the room to make sure you know I'm talking to everybody. Excited you're all here, especially for one of my my favorite things to teach on because it's probably the thing people come back to me and say. This has been so helpful with my research and it's not like the coolest tool in the world actually I should say can you see my screen right now on zoom. Can they see my. Uh, my I don't think we are right now okay let's go ahead and go to, to this so everyone can see my screen share. No. Oh no you're fine if you're in the classroom but yeah let's get to where everyone can see my screen share. Mm. Your, your screen share right. So it should it should be showing up on their end. It's just that Comstock oh. changed it so that she only sees the, the people. Fantastic. Okay, one of these things I'm still figuring out. So okay, good. So if you're all seeing my screen right now, um, so welcome to this workshop. We're going to learn how to use Zotero to collect, organize, and share your citations. Um, I'm Rebecca Cummings. Like Comstock said, I'm the Digital Matters Librarian, and my hope for this workshop is that you can actually follow along. And like set up your own account, learn how to put some, some citations into Zotero, learn how to plug them into a Word doc. But if you're also more comfortable just kind of watching what we do today and then working on your own later, that's fine as well. So we've sort of set it up where you can do either. So uh, let's talk a little bit about Zotero and how fantastic it is and what kind of sets it apart from all the other citation management systems. So there are a lot of different bibliographic software options. You might use EndNote, you might use Mendeley, um, you might use Noodle Tools or RefWorks or all kinds of things. Um, I've been using Zotero for about eight years and I've been super happy with it because um, it just makes you a much more organized researcher. It makes it much easier to find your resources later. Um, as you're writing, it's so much easier just to plug those citations into your, into your papers, into Google Docs and Word Docs. And so, Zotero, like all these other software, are bibliographic software to collect, organize, annotate, cite, and share your research resources. So it's a way to become a more organized researcher, to build your own citation library. Um, and please do let me know if any questions come up in chat or anything. Um, what I like about Zotero in particular is it is a free and open source tool for anyone to use. A lot of those other tools I mentioned are proprietary, which means you will pay a fee even if maybe you have access to something free while you're here at the U, for instance, everyone can have a free EndNote account while they're here. But then when you leave, you would have to take, you know, you'd have to start paying for that account. So I love that Zotero is free until you hit a certain um, storage limit. We'll talk a little bit about how to not hit those storage limits so quickly. Um, I'm at the point where I'm paying $20 a year for Zotero with about 3,000 citations. And I don't even mind because it makes my life so much easier at this point. It's like, in my mind, money well spent. Um, the other thing I love about Zotero is that you're able to save your citations in your browser with a single click. 
So as opposed to other places where you have to be searching in databases, I think a lot of them have sort of caught up in this regard. But Zotero was the original bibliographics, you know, software where you could have your browser extension and every time you find something, whether it's in a database or a you know, newspaper article or Amazon or wherever you're doing your research, you could save it right there with a single click. Um, other great things is it supports over 9,000 citation styles. And so whatever journal you're you know, maybe writing towards, whatever citation style you use, um, Zotero most likely has it in their options for citation styles. And the other nice thing about Zotero is it's really good for collaborative work. So if you're co-authoring someone or co-authoring a paper with someone or working on a research project together, it's really easy to set up a shared Zotero folder. And then both of you working independently can keep, you know, including like research resources and citations into Zotero. Okay, so those are my Zotero fast, fast, fast facts, my pitch on why it's maybe um, the superior uh, citation software. Although I will say, if you use something else, I'm certainly not trying to convince you to switch to Zotero. My goal for this session is that if you're not using anything at all, um, or maybe if you know, maybe you're using something and it's not working for you, that this might be something to consider. Okay, I'm also going to look at chat real quick. I'd love to do like what I call like a fast five, just to see what the expertise in the room is. So if you're in the room, just go ahead and use your fingers. If you're on chat, I'd love to see on a scale of one to five, how familiar with Zotero you already are. One being you've never ever used it, five being like you could teach this workshop. Okay, great. I'm gonna see in chat over here too. A lot of ones. To get okay, <laughs> fantastic. Okay, that gives me an idea of how quickly we need to move through some of the content and where we might linger. Um, I am hoping to go a little bit deeper with this workshop than I do other times. I'd love to talk about how to troubleshoot in Zotero, some common problems people have, um, but we are gonna start kind of at the beginning, just setting up your account, learning how to do the basics, and then we'll move into some of the more um, advanced Zotero work. Okay, so thank you for sharing, I appreciate that. So one thing I also like to mention before we get into the more, um, like diving into the different tools. I do want to mention that something that can like stop people in the beginning is the fact that there are three pieces to Zotero and they all work together. So it's important to kind of understand how those components work. And then I'm always happy to work with someone to get it set up on their own device and kind of push through the setting up period. Um, it's gotten progressively easier over the years, which is really nice. There used to be a fourth piece that you also had to install, but they've like wrapped that into the app now. Uh, but the first place that we're going to go in this workshop is Zotero.org. And that's the website. I sometimes call it the back end of Zotero. That's where you're going to go set up your account. So you pick a username and password. That's where you download the software. And you can do a few other things in that space as well. So in Zotero.org, that's where you might set up a group library if you're working collaboratively with people. Um, that's where they have amazing documentation and forums. So if you're confused on anything in Zotero, I always jump into the forums and look to see if anyone else has asked the question that I'm about to ask. Uh, it's a really, it's a good resource, although I don't spend a lot of time there. It's really just where you set up your account and download the software. And once you download the software, which is the Zotero application, that's currently Zotero 5.0. It works on you know, Mac, PC, Linux. The app is where you're going to spend, when people say in Zotero, they usually mean working in the app because that's where you save citations, um, that's where you edit your citations, and that's where you really manage your citation library. And then the last piece of Zotero is the Zotero connector. And that's the browser extension that you use to like click and save your citations and references. So in, in your Zotero connector, um, it works really, really well in Chrome. It works really well in Firefox. It works well in, let's see, Safari, but not in Internet Explorer. I believe that is the one browser it doesn't work in. And it's because the data is shut down in Internet Explorer. I think it's owned by Microsoft. And so they don't expose their data the same way that other uh, browsers do. And it's actually like making that data available, which is what allows Zotero to go in and say, oh, I see this information. I see the data. I see that this is an author. This is a date. This is a title. And so it works great, I would say, especially in Chrome and Firefox if you use either of those. Okay, so now we're gonna go in and start working in Zotero. I really hope by the end of this hour, 
everyone feels comfortable doing the basics. If not, always feel free to reach out and I'm happy to sit with you. But the first thing we're going to do is go to Zotero.org. If you haven't already done so, we're going to set up an account and install Zotero. Um, after we do that, we will go to the app and we're going to sync your online account with your app to make sure that your uh, library is being sent up to the cloud and that it's safe and secure. Uh, we will take some time to create a collection in Zotero and add a few references from different places. Um, and then we will plug those references into a Word or Google Doc, doesn't matter which one, it works equally well in a few different environment, environments. And then I'll show you how to set and change your document preferences. So if you have to go from working in NLA to APA to you know, Chicago, how you can do that in like a snap, which is one of the best things about Zotero. Sometimes people work in a particular um, citation style, but then let's say you get your article accepted somewhere and they say, oh, we actually need this this type of uh, citation style, you just click a button and it changes. And then I will do some tricks if we have time on how to edit your citations and how to troubleshoot. And then we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. Okay, I can only see the five people right now in the room, but does that sound like a good plan? Okay, perfect. Hopefully that's more or less what you're here for. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to zotero.org. And again, feel free to do this with me if you want to follow every step and try to have your own library by the end of this, or feel free to watch. Um, I have really extensive documentation online, and we will also have this workshop on a YouTube video. And so, you know, if you want to watch now and then practice later or practice along with us, either way, I think works well for us. Okay, so Zotero.org. The first thing you're going to do is I'm going to log out so that it looks maybe more like what yours looks like. On this login page right here, if you have not yet done so, please do go ahead and register for a free account. Um, pick a username or email and password. I always click remember me because it doesn't sync unless you're signed in online. And then go ahead and log in. I think you may have to prove also that you're not a robot. If you haven't done this already. And you will have to remember this username and password because we're going to use it again in like two minutes. So I'll give you all a second to do that. Okay. So after you've set up your account, um, there is this red button on the homepage on zotero.org where it says download. And you're gonna click on that if you haven't yet done so. And this is where you get um, options of what you need to download for Zotero. On a Mac, it's going to be the Zotero 5.0. This is your app and then the Zotero connector. On my screen, you might see this little button right here. It looks like a sheet of paper. That is the Zotero connector once it's all installed. And I'm, I have a feeling probably a lot of you already have this downloaded on your computers. Um, if you're working on a library computer or you know maybe something else that's already managed administratively, we have Zotero on a lot of our computers. But I'll still give like just a minute for anyone who needs to download that. So if you already have an account and you already have something in mm -hmm. Zotero, which I have no idea how that happened, mm -hmm. then should we still go back? and click the download and put install Chrome connector. If you already have Zotero, I wouldn't download it again. One thing though is you may not remember your username and password. Oh, you do, great, okay. How's chat looking? Is everyone else okay right now, able to do the download or at least see the download button for later? I guess we need uh, to ask the ah. consumers to be affirmative because in the absence of permission, we just see Blank sea of <laughs> black boxes. I know. I'm just, I will assume if no one is stopping us that we're all okay at this point. So at this point, you should have your username and password. You should be able to download Zotero. Um, if you haven't, we're going to do a quick tour here that might give you a second to catch up. I just want to show in the back end the things you have access to. Your web library is back here. So you can see all of my folders. You can actually manually add some things here, but I wouldn't recommend this as a place to add. Um, it's nowhere near as nimble as the application is. Um, other things that you can do in Zotero.org is create a new group. So if, again, if you're working on a research project um, collaboratively, you can create a new group. 
all you have to do is change the name for your group, choose how open you want that group to be, and invite people to join. Super, super simple to do that. Um, and I will say, like, again, this is not like the, you know, one of those topics that's super flashy and exciting, like uh, maybe like web scraping or network graphs, but it's one of these foundational pieces for research that once you get going on it, you honestly don't know how you live without it. So that's, I'll just keep pitching Zotero along the way. Um, this is the documentation. So if after this workshop, you get started on Zotero and have some questions, this documentation page is the very first place I would go because there is so much great information. Again, it's that open source community where people are really responsive and invested in the tool. And I feel like you get answers really quickly. And then if you have more advanced questions, the forums are usually a good place to, to check those out. Okay, but that's, that's pretty much what you do in the back end of Zotero. The place where you will, like I said before, spend the most time is in the actual application. So if you have this little Z, this application, go ahead and open that now. And if you have your Zotero app up, you should be okay. Well, I don't, I don't know if it's an app or what. This, uh, click on the Windows button. All right, push the Windows button here. Yeah. Type Zotero. Um, thank you, David. We're just going to take a quick look at the Zotero application. So you can see here, I've maximized my Zotero app. It has this really cool, like three pane uh, interface here. And the way that this functions is this side over here. This is my library on, I guess, on your, on your left. So it's all the different folders and things that I've created. If you look at the bottom, it's all my group libraries. So all the different people that I'm working with. Um, and inside these folders, you can have subfolders. So this is where I'm going to give my librarian pitch to try right up front to be as organized as you possibly can. I think when you only have a few things, there's this like, you know, feeling like you can just dump it all into my library. But I promise you that does not scale as time goes on. So, you know, you know, either creating folders by topic or maybe a class that you're working on or a particular paper can be really useful when you need to go back and try to find things later. So there's the library on the left. The middle things are the contents of individual collections. So when I click my library, you're going to see all 2,835 things. But when you click on individual collections, you see just the content of that collection. And then when you click on individual items, you're going to see the bibliographic record for it on the right. So um, the item of interest in Zotero is the bibliographic record, it's the citation. It's not necessarily the PDFs or the photos. It's not like a library where the thing itself is the item of interest. In here, the bibliographic record is what you're saving. I would encourage you to try to save as few PDFs and attachments as possible, just because that is the stuff that makes your storage fill up like that. So if you make it a habit of adding PDFs to Zotero, um, you will start paying for it pretty quickly. If you don't, and you're just saving the bibliographic information, you can get away with having a free account for a pretty long time. Um, the only time I save PDFs is when I've gone through the trouble of getting something through interlibrary loan, because I don't want to have to do that again. So that's when I save a PDF, but generally I try not to do that. Because most things, you know, especially if you're a student or a faculty or staff member, you have access to it online anyway, and the URL gets saved as a piece of information. So when you click on it, it automatically gets pulled up. So now that we're in the application and we've looked at the interface a bit, um, yours probably is a little bit more empty than this one. Um, let's go to this Zotero button and look at your Zotero preferences. So the first thing that you're gonna do in Zotero if you haven't yet done this is you're going to sync that online account that we just created to your application. So in sync, let's see, so it's uh, Zotero preferences and then go to sync. And you can see here it has my username. I could unlink my account and do it again, but just put whatever username and password you just created into the preferences. And at that point, your Zotero in the cloud and your application are connected. So every time you add something, it gets sent to your library in the cloud. There's, there's lots of other things you can do in Zotero preferences. You can see here that I've unchecked that box that says automatically attach associated PDFs to keep my storage down. Um, you can look at things like, you know, picking what your default citation style is. 
Uh, we're going to look at advanced a little bit later on when I talk about backing up your Zotero library. But yeah, that's where you're that's where you're going to adjust your preferences for Zotero. Okay, so let's come back to my library. And what we're going to do today is create a collection and add some things to our collection. And again, you can do it with me or create your own. But like, let's just pick a topic that we can pretend that we're researching right now and saving things on. Anyone have some like something of interest right now? Dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. OK, perfect. We are in Utah. There you go. New collection. There we go. So, oh, so to get a new collection, you just right click on my library and do new collection. And once you're in Zotero 2, you can like drag and drop different things. So if I wanted digital literacy to be under digital humanities, you can just make it a subfolder. So there's drag and drop functionality here as well. But our dinosaurs is going to be a top level folder that we're doing for our dinosaur research today. So, okay, so you can see when I click on dinosaurs, it's currently empty. I'm going to keep it highlighted though, because when I'm working in Chrome, I want things to drop right into my dinosaur folder. So let's keep that open for right now. Okay. And I'm going to go start my research. Where I often start my research, I'm going to go to the Marriott Library website. So lib.utah.edu. Um, I think I'm already logged in, but let's just go ahead and check. Okay, cool. So when I downloaded the application, um, it did it. Um, I should. I also installed this connector, and you can see that it's already up there in my Chrome. So let's go ahead, and we're going to search. Let's say I'm going to use an asterisk. I'll catch dinosaur and dinosaurs. Let's see what's something we can study. And Utah. It tells me we'll have probably a lot of results for that. Okay, so we're getting 12,732 results. So I'm doing my dinosaur research right now. Um, I'm collecting, uh oh, I didn't want to log out. Doing my dinosaur research. I'm going to go into the library catalog, see what shows up. Okay, and now we're looking at a lot of data in our catalog. We're looking at a lot of bibliographic records. Let's go ahead and pick this one right here. Doug Sprinkle, that's a fun name. Okay, so we can see that we have this at the Marriott Library. We're looking at all this beautiful bibliographic information. And let's say I decide that this is just perfect for my research paper. So this is where you can go ahead. Oh, it's just giving me a lot of different things I could grab. So let's say these are the two things that I want to say. So it's not usually a folder, but we're going to save those items. So we just saved those in Marriott Library. And now you can see that they're there in our Zotero folder. They have automatically gotten pulled in. Okay. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go like. Let's go to Amazon. Let's say we're looking for dinosaur books in Amazon. Dinosaurs and Utah. And I'm only in Amazon, not because it's like a scholarly place to look, but I want to show you that Zotero works anywhere where bibliographic information is accessible to it. So what it's doing is it's scanning, scanning the site right now. It's finding this information down here. And you can see that it can sense it's a book because that showed up as a book in Chrome. And we go ahead and click on that. So now we've saved another item. Saving two dinosaurs. And there it is. So now we have our, our three things. Oh, I wonder if that's which Bagley that is. Oh, that is Pat Bagley. Cool. Okay, so I just want to search one more place. Let's go ahead and search the New York Times. So let's look up dinosaurs and Utah here. Okay. 
It's showing some articles from the past. There's some more scientific ones. We'll go ahead and pick that from 2015. And you can see this little icon just changed from a newspaper because it can see that the item of interest, the bibliographic record is a newspaper in this case. So let's go ahead and save that as well. And again, if you're not um, able to like keep up exactly with everything we're saving, that's okay. We're gonna take a couple minutes actually to save on your own and practice and just make sure everyone's doing okay right now. But in my dinosaur research, I now have four items in this Zotero folder. So, and this last one you can see, that it's a newspaper article, it captured the title, the author, an abstract, the publication, the date, lots of really rich information. And then also like if I wanted to add notes, like if there was something in that particular item where I like, oh, I really love that quote or a statistic from the article, I could save it in the notes. So you can do some annotation in Zotero as well. And New York Times is so wonderful. They have all these lovely tags that we can use. So if you search, you know, when you're searching on Zotero, if you're searching on anything like the author, the title, the tags, like all of it is able to like pull up the thing that you need, which makes it really flexible. So even if you only remember one thing about the item that you're looking for, it's pretty easy to go in and find it. And then there's this related tag here. I don't use this very often. The only time I've used it in the past is if there's a special issue and I want to show that those things are related to one another, I might use that. But mostly on this tab, I'm just using the notes and the tags. Okay. So I've gone ahead and grabbed four things. I want you to take just like five minutes right now. I'm gonna stop sharing. We're gonna go into breakouts and we're gonna talk in the room and in Zoom, if you could go into groups of three or four and just take like five minutes right now to grab some items. And also if you're having trouble, maybe in the small groups, you can you know, have someone maybe be able to help you learn how to grab some things. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a sec. Okay. And I'm gonna do some breakouts. Or are you creating some? Yep. Great. Okay. So again, we're gonna take a five minute break. Anyone who needs to catch up or has questions, maybe ask other people in your group or bring your questions back. But go ahead and try to save a few things into whatever uh, whatever collection you've created. Okay. Okay. All right, we'll see you all in five minutes. I just made some, sorry. Oh, you already did. Yeah, Thank you. You're so that. fast. Okay, see you soon. So,
for instance, the book of Hey, I think everyone should be back now. Um, anyone have any like challenges or anything adding adding data to Zotero while we were I, Sorry, I just have a question about, I know you were able to disable downloading PDFs, um, but I don't have a Mac. <laughs> so I don't know how to turn that off on my Zotero app. Okay. Could I screen share? Can you enable that? Yeah, let's take a look at your preferences and see what we see because it definitely looks different on a PC. Oh, actually, I think we'd have to make you a co-host. Okay. You know, maybe what we'll do, let's actually save this for Q&A and do it at the end, just because I worry it might take us a little bit and we don't get to get through all the content. But Callie, I'm gonna make a note to take that question first in Q&A. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, so Dylan was able to pin Zotero connector to Google Chrome, awesome. That is like a key thing. I do want to point out a couple other things that are really important when you're grabbing data. So I'm going to go ahead and screen share again. So one of the best things about Zotero is that you don't always have to have the best metadata in front of you. Sometimes you're going to end up on like websites where it's like the data just isn't very well structured or it, it, like if you try to import it, it shows up kind of poorly. So one thing I always use in Zotero is what's called the magic wand feature. I'm not sure if many of you use this, but if you have any kind of persistent unique identifier like a DOI, an ISSN, uh, ISBN, you could just take that and put it into Zotero and it'll pull the best metadata up. I find that this is one of the ways to get like the richest bibliographic record. So in this particular instance, I found a dinosaur record that had a DOI. It's an article from I think, 2016. So when I'm in Zotero, there's this little magic wand right here. It looks kind of like kind of like a little flashlight. And when you click on it, you just enter the persistent identifier. And that will pull, it finds the metadata online and it pulls all of it up. So that's a that's a tool I use all the time. Also, because sometimes people will give me like a paper copy of something and I just input the DOI and then it comes right in. Um, another thing I Oh, the DOI. So a DOI is a digital object identifier, and it's a piece of metadata that's often available um, in the bibliographic record. So if you're not like this is a really rich metadata record, you probably wouldn't have to do it here. But if you found like, let's just even say you were sent to a PDF that lived online and the DOI was available, you can just copy and paste it and put it into Zotero because the metadata probably isn't. Well, you're probably not going to get much metadata from a PDF online. And then if it has like an ISSN or ISBN, you can use those persistent identifiers too. Another thing, if I'm not finding the best data is sometimes I'll go to WorldCat, which is the world catalog. And so let's say for instance, you have like a list of articles that someone gave you that you need to input into Zotero. Maybe you're a grad student working for a faculty member and they're like, hey, I need all these things in my Zotero. It, rather than looking around online, I just go to WorldCat and it pulls up over 2 billion bibliographic records that live online. And that's a great place to like consolidate your searching into one location and have really good librarian rich metadata. So those are two just little tips for grabbing data if you're not finding the best things like by default. Maybe someone just gave you something that doesn't have very good data attached to it like a PDF. Okay, so I think we're ready now to go ahead and write our paper. We have our little collection of dinosaur things that we're going to write on. So I'm going to work in Word, but again, if you were working in um, Google Docs or I believe LaTeX or different things, it works, it seems like, in pretty much everywhere that people write. So in Word, something that you are going to notice when you download Zoom thing, is Word now has this little Zotero add-on. 
And that comes when you download the application. It should, and then you have to like quit Word and refresh, but it should show up in your Word. Um, sometimes it doesn't, and that's often because maybe you have like a more dated Microsoft Office suite. Um, in which case, let's talk. Maybe you can get a newer one at the library because we have those available for people at Knowledge Commons. But if you're not getting it, please let me know and we'll try to troubleshoot that together. Um, so in Word, so the other thing, when you click Zotero, you're going to want to set your document preferences right off the bat. So it also gives the option of doing this as soon as you start writing. But for me, I usually pick APA. If you click on document preferences, just go ahead and pick whatever you like, whether it's MLA, APA, Chicago, something else. I'll go ahead and pick APA. Okay. So now we're going to start writing our dinosaur paper. Um, dinosaurs lived in Utah for millions of years. Oops, sorry. My keyboard's a little wacky right now. Everything comes up double. Okay, and now it's time to add our first citation. So add edit citation. It takes you to this red bar. And let's say now we're gonna do the Bagley article that we saved. And there it is. Boom, just like that. No work, no effort, it's fantastic. Okay. Our next sentence, these are, these are never the best papers that I write on the fly. So dinosaurs lived in Utah for millions of years. Um, now they are extinct. Okay, ready to write our next citation. Okay, and let's say you wanna add two citations here. Let's add Kinkowski and let's add our Maelstrom article. Um, my kids, dinosaurs. I hope your papers are better than mine. This is just, just to show the citations. So the, let's add another one. Let's say the United States Park Service. Okay, and of course, like we could keep going with all these different citations. Um, let's say we notice that something is wrong here. Let's just pretend that there's a typo. One thing to know is to please not edit the citation in like in the field code in your Word doc because that'll corrupt it. If you notice that there's some kind of problem with your with your data in here, where you're going to want to fix it is actually in Zotero. So let's pretend this, let's pretend Bagley is spelled wrong here. Maybe it's like, let's say there's no E. There is an E, but we're going to pretend there's not. So if you notice there was a problem, you go back to Zotero and then you edit your, you edit the data in Zotero. So I'm taking out the E. You can come back here and refresh. Sometimes it takes a second. Okay, and there it is. It got rid of the, the mistake. So when you're done writing, when all your citations look the way they're supposed to look, the last thing you do is like my favorite button, just adding your bibliography. And there it is. And it's just so incredibly wonderful. And now I do say like, it's not done done when you look at it here. Usually Zotero will get you like 90 to 95% of the way there. And then, it, then you have to go through and look for any mistakes that might have gotten picked up. Um, these look pretty good, but this one like here, like US Department of Interior, that probably shouldn't be all together like that. So that's when you need to go back. Um, and fix things that look a little wacky. Okay. Okay. So that's, I mean, that's all basic Zotero right there, how to add citations, how to plug them into your Word documents. I mean, my hope is that, you know, nobody wastes time doing this work by hand. Um, and then of course, like if you wrote this article and then learned you had to switch the, the, you know, the type of citation, you just go to document preferences. Let's switch to MLA. And it just automatically updates. Now, if there's things that you need to do, like let's say with this, you realize, oh, I actually need to add like a page number. You can do add edit citation. And you can either add like 
here, page 20. And that'll update your citation as well. So there's lots of things that you can do within Zotero to like customize it. So if it's not showing up exactly the way you want it to look, there's more things that you can do. Okay, so let's see. Do we have any questions while we're at this this moment right here? So I don't have Zotero connected to Zotero in my Word suite. But if you go to your library mm -hmm. and you click on something that you have, is there a way to find like a quick citation in that format? Yeah. So if you if you don't have Zotero uploaded in Word, I mean something that some people do. Let me just start a new Word doc. Some. Some people, I don't recommend this. I think it's great to have it installed in Word or Google Docs if you can, but something you can do is just do like a drag and drop. So if you have a bibliography, for example, already in Zotero and you just want to take it over, you just drag it out of Zotero and into your Word doc and you don't even need Zotero installed in Word to do that. So that's something you could do if you, for whatever reason, didn't have Zotero installed in Word. Do you know, I use the like Office 365 in browser word. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there's a way to like add a plugin to have the same functionality mm -hmm. as the desktop app? If not, know. that's okay. I was just, because I can use the desktop app. I just usually use the in browser one. So yeah. Yeah, no, I don't know, but I can definitely check. Anyone else know? Like I saw Jeremy Brown on here. Maybe he knows if you can use Office 365 with Zotero. You could do the click, the drag and drop thing, I'm sure. But yeah, yeah, yeah certainly the drag and drop. That works, seems to work everywhere. Right. I've never tried it. Okay. I feel like you just know everything, Jeremy. I'm like, I will just ask him if I see his name. Okay. All right. So let's see. Um, other things that I wanted to mention. So we've talked about how to fix mistakes in Zotero and refresh, how to change your document preferences. Um, something that people do ask me is getting data in and out of Zotero. It's super, super simple. Probably the main thing you need to know though is that the, the format is called RIS, where you export things in and out from like, let's say you're currently working in EndNote. So I'll just show you how you would do that. So if you're in Zotero and well, I'll show you how to pull data out of Zotero first. So let's say you needed, let's say you're on a team and they're like, we work in EndNote. You, can you bring your citations over here? All you have to do is export your collection so I just right clicked on that dinosaurs export collection. There's this risk format right here. And you push OK. And it just shows up as a file for me on my desktop. And that can be imported into something like EndNote. And the same goes for EndNote. When you're in there, you can just export the data. And then, you know, for Zotero, you can import it into here. So it's like, I'll just show you what that looks like. So here is our dinosaur risk file. There's my EndNote web. Which I do use EndNote from time to time, but not, not so much anymore. Okay, and if I were in EndNote and under collect, it just says import references. Choose file. Import option. And this is where it's tricky because there's so many options here, but RIS is the one that you're looking for again. Or sometimes they call it refman RIS. There it is. And then I'm going to create a new, a new group called dinosaurs. And it's just that easy. If you go back to my references, you can see that my dinosaur data moved from uh, Zotero into EndNote. So the first thing I ever, my first interaction with Zotero was actually pulling like 2000 things out of EndNote and back into Zotero. And so that can feel kind of daunting. It takes a long time to like upload as opposed to our little, you know, uh, five item collection here, but it is pretty easy to pull data in and out between tools. Okay. So the very last thing I'm going to show in Zotero that um, and then I can just open up for questions. 
is sometimes people ask me like how do I back up my Zotero library because you put a lot of work into it, maybe a lot of thought into like having your file folders a particular way. So there is a way to back up Zotero if you go to Zotero preferences and then you search advanced so Zotero preferences advanced and then you click on uh, files and folders and show data dictionary. And this is your Zotero folder. So I sometimes I used to do it more often where like every few months I would pull my Zotero data and keep the whole folder in box just because I was so paranoid that one day I would sink the wrong direction and all of my references would disappear. After like eight or nine years, I'm less paranoid about that happening. So I, I don't do that so much anymore. But if you are like really, you know, um, vigilant about data management, that's how you would back up your Zotero library to make sure it doesn't just ever disappear on you one day. Can you look through advanced? Yeah. So if you go to um, Zotero preferences, and then you go to the advanced tab. Oh. And then underneath that, there's another tab called files and folders and show data directory. And that shows you where your Zotero folder lives. So everything to do with your Zotero is in here. So you can pull that folder out and put it in box or somewhere else as a backup. Or I'm not pull it out, you would want to copy it and pull the copy into box. What do you do after advanced? Oh, you go to, I'll just show you. So advanced mm -hmm. files and folders show data directory, and then there's your Zotero, all the files and everything. And that, that is everything I have for today. I'm gonna to stop share. Well, I will show you one more thing, actually, I'm sorry. This is my contact information. If anyone wants to reach out to me after, after this presentation and talk about any problems you're having with Zotero, that's great. I also have a campus guide on lib.utah.edu where you can find all of my documentation around Zotero. As you saw earlier, there's really good documentation online as well. And then we will have this workshop on the Digital Matters YouTube page. So if you have any questions and want to go back to see how we did some of the things we did, that will be available on YouTube. So I'm going to now go ahead and stop sharing for real. Okay. So does anyone have any questions today? You can, I think, probably just talk or put them in the chat, either one. Uh, I have a question. So uh, I, I didn't know about the magic wand function. Oh, yes. And I see that a lot of my entries already have EOIs mm -hmm. somewhere. Uh, is there a way to automatically go through all of the automate, automate the process so that you just go through the, the, each entry and automatically pull the EOIs that are already there? I mean, I don't. I don't know of like something that would do it without you. So not that I'm aware of, but that's a good, I mean, that's a good question to be like, I'm, if it can be automated, you know, there's probably a workaround, but not one that I know of. Or you just wanted to make your data as great as possible. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions online? Oh. If we don't have any other questions, we will probably just wrap up the recording, which will be available online. And thank you so much to everyone who came today. I really appreciate it. And please do feel free to reach out to me if you have any more questions. And our next workshop is on October 20th, and that's with Jeremy Brown. It's on the Women Exponent Ads Pro Project. So watch out for that. Thanks, everyone.